to another episode of T-Shirt Driving. In this episode, we're gonna be showing you how to swap the brake pads on the Rotora Big Brake Kit, front and rear, as well as doing our stopping distance test on the track pads. So I am excited to see what these uh, pads can do, and I hope you enjoy the simple swapping of the pads. So from here, it's pretty simple. You are going to be using a five millimeter hex or um, and then a 10 millimeter wrench here. Easy as that. There is a bolt in the rear as well as the front, making a sandwich. I always take out the rear first, just because it makes it a little bit easier for the process of it. So as you can see, that's one from the rear, and then one from the front of the piston. I use a longer one just so I don't mar or scratch anything up too much. As you guys can probably see, I've already got some good little nicks, whether it be from rocks or removing the wheel and accidentally touching it. Now the next trick is to push down on your um, wrench. Because this is a little spring loaded. Boom, this is your spring actuator. Holds all the pistons down. Now, could you slide these out? Possibly. But to make life easier, I have a really cool tool. Ugh. I picked this up years ago. And this thing is amazing. It's can be used for four pistons or six piston calipers. You open it up, you push, it spreads apart the uh, pads. Um, you can use it this way or this way. And again, as easy as that so on a closer look before even taking the pads on now these are the track pads so they're super dusty as you can tell so we're gonna be switching back to the street pads I'm gonna go the nice long way I'm gonna catch just enough of the lip of the brake pads pry them open and then it's as easy as push and they come out and this side just as easy as that now because I am putting brand new pads in, I'm gonna make sure all the pistons are completely pushed in. So now that the pads are removed, I'm gonna go ahead and put my tool inside. And then do the rest of the compression. Make sure to feel that if anything else, you can do the rest, last little bits, with your fingers. So, as you can see, these are our track pads. They've had a track day on it, a couple of fun mountain runs, as well as our brake tests, and they are doing phenomenal with wear. Plenty of life. I would say these are abundant of track days left over, or track miles. These are our street pads. These are brand new. These are the H2 compounds. So if I didn't say it, the track pads were the H8. Um, these are great for low dust, low noise, and great initial bite as well. If you saw in our track video before, our test video before, these stop at 69 feet average. The track pads, as you guys will be seeing, um, well, I'll let you find out on that one. So again, you've pushed everything in. Next step, there's no markings um, that I've put on there to mark which side's left or right. But uh, if you're finding that it's a little troublesome, like right now one side will go in but one won't, you just push a little bit with your fingers and the piston will push in just like so. These slide perfectly right in. Same thing over here. One side goes in, one side doesn't. Just give it a little push. And sometimes you have to do it with two fingers because when you push in one, another one 
wants to pop out. There we are. Nice and easy. Now the installing is just a reverse process. You're gonna put the spring. Next up, your bridge. So you're gonna notice that there are, is definitely tension. So you're gonna have to push down on this as you are trying to thread in your bolt. So I go ahead and get this nice and ready. I'm gonna push in with my fingers first, get a couple threads, and then do the same on the other side where it'll be a little bit easier because now it's already pushed down. I usually still do have to give it a little push to get the threads to catch, but it's not a huge deal. Now you want these tight, but you don't want to obviously strip them. They are hex pattern, which over time after many uses, you may want to just replace. And that is how you install the front. So now we're going to move to the rear and show you just how to do that. So we're going to repeat the same process in the rear, removing the rear wheel, as well as me mentioning that the fancy orange tool that I have, if any of you are interested, this is not a sponsored item, it's just a really cool tool. Um, I've noticed it works on most aftermarket brake kicks, except for wheel woods for some reason. It does not like to compress the pistons on wheel woods. And I don't know if it's just because Willwoods don't come with dust shields, so dirt gets in there and gets all uh, clogged up. But anyways, this is called the Gyro Disc. As you can tell, there's plenty of wear on it. The name is even coming off. Um, I can't tell you what website I got it from, but I'm sure Google can, if it's even available still. Really awesome. Makes changing brake pads so easy, especially if you have a big brake kit. So here you are, the four-piston rear brake. We've got a very similar setup, except for the bridge, instead of being a 10 millimeter, is an eight millimeter. Everything else is the same process. One benefit, you do not have to retrack the electronic brake like you would have to do in your normal OEM setup with the one piston. Also, yes, I am running an ugly aluminum three millimeter spacer just to make clearance. Otherwise, my wheel touches right here with the Project 6GR 19 by 9.5 wheels. OEM wheels clear, as well as the OZ Rally wheels I was running, the 19 by 8.5. They cleared just fine, but I need to run just a small spacer to clear that. So we're going to do the same thing. You're going to get your 5 millimeter and break that loose. Do the same in the rear. Again, remember to push down on the bridge on the last couple threads. And then as you release, the spring will unload. There you are. Now to remove the rears, I'm gonna do the same thing with my gyro disc or piston compressor. Except for, I'm not gonna be using it this way because it's too large. I'm gonna be rotating it the narrow way, which is meant for, for piston brakes. Now the rear brakes have a smaller lip, as you hopefully can see, but it's still large enough where you can catch it to compress them, so you can remove them. Sometimes it just wants to slide right off them. So right there, I got a good bite. That's a good bite on the pole. Now the fronts are super easy. They just push out and not a problem. The rears, however, you're like, wait a minute, I can't get my hands back there. Also, remember how I said to make sure you clean off the beveled edges of your heat shield? Well, this is why, because when you try to put your hand back there, you're gonna be like, ow, 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 I'm getting cut up. So what I do, because one, you can't access it, is I have a very small, um, hex. I use a 1 8. I never use it. It's in my toolbox. It's, I don't know, five inches in length. All right. And then uh, I just go behind the piston and just push out the brake pad as if it were my hand. I go on the bottom, 
I go on the top and you can see the little bit of movement happening there. Now as your brake pads wear more, this will obviously be a lot easier because your pistons will be, or your brake pad will have more wear, meaning when you compress your pistons, they'll be a lot looser. But everything is still fairly new. Grab it. Yeah, there we go. And that's how you get the rear ones up. So again, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go in with my tool, although those feel pretty good, but I am going to be putting in some fairly new pads. I just want to make sure everything is compressed. Now I have my H2 pads. Yes, I've been running on these. I even did a track day with these ones. And you can see we've got a couple little burnt spots, but the pad itself is fairly good. You still have your chamfering there to prevent squealing or noise. Um, very good ceramic compound. Slides right in. Slides right in. And again, you do not have to do anything with your electronic parking brake. Just make sure it is off, obviously. Um, with any time you're replacing any rear brake setup. You put your bridge in. You get your 8mm tool. Get your 5mm hex. Put that in. Pushing. I find the rears are a little more difficult with the tension than the fronts are. But I got that in, and I'm going to do the same thing with the rear. Okay, so you're going to push down and thread those bolts in by hand. Tighten it up nice and tight. Not too much though, because again, you don't want to strip it. And that is how you install the rear. So you put your wheel back on, you do the same thing on the other side. Make sure to press your brake pedal so the pistons can fill in and when you go to leave, you don't feel like there's no pressure. Also, remember to bet in your brakes afterwards with any brake change. Now, when they're not new, I find that is a lot quicker in the bedding in process of doing the 60 mile an hour to 5 mile an hour stops. Again, do it on a place that you feel safe and comfortable with. You don't want to be breaking any laws. Um, what else? Make sure to warm up your brakes a little bit before that. So as you're approaching, you know, ride your brake a little bit, not like fully on braking or anything like that, but like let's say you're going 30 miles an hour to get to your destination, ride the brake just to heat up the brakes a little bit so you're just not slamming on them when they're super cold. Um, yeah, these are pretty simple as you can see the process of it. And now, if you will all, enjoy the uh, video for the stopping distance on the track pads, which are these blue ones, which are still wonderful condition. And we will see how quickly these stop once they are hot. Get up to 55 miles an hour. There we are. We're at the cone. Going for stop number two. Gonna get up to 55 miles an hour. Stop number three, gonna get up to 55 miles an hour again. So we have definitely decreased from first stop to second stop. Let's see where we have 55 and hold it. All right, let's try this again, 55 miles an hour, fourth attempt. Did not get to record the third one.
So we just finished recording and checking our distances for our stop test. The first stop, I tried to warm up the brakes, but I wasn't giving them a super hard. So I would say definitely compared to the other runs, not as hot. So the hotter these pads run, the better they're gonna be. Um, they just work better with more heat. That's what track pads are designed for. Anyways, the first run was its total stopping distance of 65 feet, which is still shorter than our street pad compound. Our second run, we had 53 feet. Then our third run, which stopped somewhere similar, I just wasn't able to mark it as I saw there was a car approaching at a much faster rate than the speed limit here. Um, so I quickly pulled off. So that one I had a toss, unfortunately, but it was relatively within that second stopping spot. On our fourth stop, exactly the same as the second, 53 feet to the dot, like literally the bumper lined up perfectly spot for spot. Um, when you average the 65 and the 53 feet, you, we get 57 feet for our average if we're going to include the cold run. And you can clearly see the track pads, how they enjoy heat. Could you daily them? You could. You're going to have not a very good initial brake bite, especially if you're on the highway or something like that where your rotors and pads are cold. Um, you're going to have squeaking just because that's how the pads design. You know, it's going to be more abrasive. It's going to, it's got a higher friction compound, but you can clearly see from my real world test that the track data is matching what I'm getting out here. Also, you're not going to get brake fade as I experienced out on the track. No brake fade whatsoever with this kit. Um, no need of brake ducts either. And I was pushing it hard on a very technical um, brake heavy course. So I hope you enjoyed our little statistical um, collection of data as well as our overview of how to install or swap out the brake pads. Thank you guys.